Oh. Hey there, everybody. Welcome into this edition of Extra Time. So you're on double bubble tonight. Double bubble from here straight into the closet uh, next door to do the Football America show with Hercules from Los Angeles. But joining us now, Shaka. He gets to Ian. from LA. Lovely sunny LA. And I'm, and I'm here in Bristol. I asked to work with you today, so that was, that was a sacrifice I was personally willing to make to make uh, this, well, this work. To be fair, that's what we thought. <laughs> Just glad that you've reiterated mm -hmm. the, my thoughts. First question from Riley, the big golden doodle. What was your attitude like in the final few games of the season when there wasn't anything left to play for? Would you still give it your 100% or were you, in the words of Craig Burley, not bothered? <laughs> uh, well, it must be tough to get motivated, right? I think you have the intentions of going out. If you're not in a relegation fight and you've not got anything to play for at the other end, and there's no cup competition. So if you're out of, you're not fighting for a place in the team to play in an FA Cup final or something like that. Subconsciously, I think it's difficult. You don't go out with the intention to be, I'm not going to be bothered today because people have paid money to sure. come and watch and they're still I don't know, 30, 40,000 there. But I think subconsciously you do come down a level because the pressure is off somewhat. So I wouldn't quite go as far as the not bothered. Mm -hmm. But something changes. Slightly not bothered. <laughs> Ian, do you think, oh, a boxing question. Ian, do you think Tyson Fury will go down as one of the greatest heavyweight boxers in history? Uh, he'd probably be in the top 10, I'd say now, but uh, probably no higher than seven or eight because he hasn't got much longevity, but he's a really good fighter. He's quick, he's got a wonderful skill set, fast hands. Um, yeah, I don't think see anybody around at the moment who's going to beat him, put it that way. That was a heck of an uppercut, wasn't it? And that, did, did you see it? I didn't, I uh, know. Dillian White fight. Ian, did you see it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, he produced a peach of a punch as they say, to end Peach the contest. Peach punch, I like that one. Uh, but he, he was want to be on the end of that, huh? Second to that fight. I've had my teeth knocked out. I, yes. I don't, I, I don't want that scenario. <laughs> I don't want the whole shebang coming out. No. Gosh. What does that guy weigh? Over 300? What's that? Uh, would you do it in stones or what? <laughs> He's huge. I'm adaptable. I can give you pounds if you want. OK, what is he in pounds? Well, I, I, I mean, I. Ian, what, is, what, what does Tyson Fury weigh? I, I would be guessing. Um, I'd say about 250 pounds, isn't it, right around there? Uh, I thought he'd be more than I would have thought more, too. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up here. We'll yeah, Ian, I heard, somebody, I heard the conversation, actually. It was, on, uh, it was on our network, because it was our network that had the boxing, the Tyson Fury fight. And they were discussing... What are you laughing at? <laughs> We've just totally gone off the rails of boxing, but go on. No, no, just a quick one. Mm -hmm. uh, they were discussing Tyson Fury being where he ranked in boxing. <clears throat> and one of the boxing commentators said, well, Mike Tyson, as good as he was, was knocking out, was knocking out washed up heavyweights. Hmm. Is that? Ian? Is that right, Ian? Well, I don't think Michael Spinks was a washed up heavyweight, was he, when, when Mike Tyson beat him in that, uh, fight in Atlantic City. No, I think Larry, the key... Larry Holmes, Pinklin Thomas, Trevor Berbick. Larry Holmes is in the top three all time. Muhammad Ali uh, would mm -hmm. be number one. Uh, Joe Lewis would be number two. And Larry Holmes, I think in most people's list, would be about number three. He was vastly underrated. But I wouldn't uh, suggest Mike Tyson, but I just was quite surprised because he was mopping the whole division up at that point. Anyway, we digress. <laughs> And I know that you've got places to go. Well, nowhere more important than here. Nadam's interior decorator what asks... Nowhere's more important than here. You've stuffed in that Football Americas promo about 16 you, times in the show. Honestly, and then you tell I, us... You want do you to think I produce the show? Do you think I have any say in what happens here? Question. Are the signings of Christensen and Kessie, Ansu Fadi returning to full fitness, and a full summer of training under Xavi enough for Barcelona to close the gap on Real Madrid next season, or do they still need more help? Well, well, the one thing I would say is Christensen has had a difficult period of late. Not to suggest he's not a good player, but he's had some bad times, particularly from Christmas onwards. In fact, when his name was read out on the team sheet at the uh, FA Cup semi-final, it did not go down too well amongst the Chelsea mm -hmm. supporters. 
So that's a kind of you just never know. Kessie has always been a I think a terrific uh, strong midfielder for, for Milan. But I think they're going to need more than that, to be quite frank with you. 15 points, the uh, the difference as we speak. Ian, prior to the internet, how would you do your research on players before a game? Did you ever get wrong information on a player and didn't realize until after the match? Uh, yeah, I guess sometimes we all get something wrong somewhere and a player might even complain. It. But uh, they, there used to be a time when you would be, there are now so many games on television that it's no big deal anymore, but it used to be a big deal. And if, the, if it was a TV game and you were the commentator, you'd get invited down to the training ground maybe, you'd have a cup of tea with the manager, you'd mark your card about the players, you'd have a chance to speak to them. Now it operates behind a big PR wall. So things have changed a lot in that regard, even from the time when, when Craig was playing. But um, yeah, we get the information Anyhow, we can, but trying to get the team out of any manager these days is like asking for a state secret. So good job then, Ian. You're a technological genius on the computer. Oh, oh if only I... <laughs> Chaka, what's so funny about Ian being a technological genius? No, nothing, nothing at all. <laughs> He's a technological genius. That man's That's never all. off his computer. Uh, That's Chaka, all. His lot. Uh, next question, Alexander Mitrovic just set a new record for goals scored in a championship season with a game to go. We talked about that earlier, 43. How many goals will he get in the Premier League next season? What do you think, Shaka? More than 10? I'm going to go for 14. Ooh. I'm going to go 14. Just over a third of, or oh, just under a third of what he scored this season. Uh, listen, I, I, I think it's going to be a hard season for Fulham, of course. If you get 14 out of Mitrovic, that's an incredible return. You think that fair? From 43 in the championship down to 14? Oof, he scores 14 goals in the Premier League, he's had a great season. And a team that's likely to be fighting for survival again. This question's come up so much, not just on this show, in a lot of different mediums. It, it's, it's popped up. Oh, why can Mitrovic not score in the Premier Why can he do it? I mean, do people really not understand why it's way more difficult to score in the Premier League than it is in the championship? Mm -hmm. What he's done, has been incredible. Uh, but unless they go out and spend the budget of a Man City or a Liverpool, then it's going to be super difficult for them. They're losing the, one of their best playmakers as well in Carvalho to Liverpool. Uh, so it's just not easy. You, I mean, if he gets 10 chances, and I'm just surmising, if he gets 10 chances in a championship game and scores three, the likelihood is in a Premier League game if he's lucky, he'll get two, and he'll probably get one. Yeah. So, and you have to your 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 conversion rate has to be <laughs> pretty much a hundred percent at that rate. So, it's really difficult. Yeah, they're not hanging seven on people in the Premier League next season. They've done that what three or four times this season. So, yeah, yeah, lots it's, of goals to be had in the it's championship. A, it's, a, it's a different dynamic. I didn't know this, but apparently it's Teacher Appreciation Week this week. So let's name or shout out a youth coach, or I guess it could be teacher who influenced their development, your development, back in the day. Craig? Oh, it'd have to be my golf coach, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think. <laughs> uh, Do you remember the first coach that really hooked you? Was there one? Uh, <laughs> no, nah, not really. No? I Just my dad and my granddad. You, can't, really? you had a footballing family, right? Yeah, football my uncle and all that. played yeah. uh, for uh, international, played for Ipswich and uh, blah, 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 managed. So, yeah. Uh, no surprise then, Craig didn't have a good relationship with his teacher. Shaka, whoa, did whoa, you? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I didn't say good relationship. I had lots of coaches, but I started with my father and my granddad when I was a little boy. Right. Uh, Shaka, anybody stand out for you? Yeah, I, I, let me shout out two. One, I'll shout out uh, Basil Smith, who's the first coach who said to me, you're the tallest, you're the goalkeeper, as, as a 10-year-old. Um, that's the first time I ever played in goal, and the rest, as they say, is history. But secondly, and, and most importantly, Bertil Sinclair, um, who was my first national youth team coach, who was the only coach who could have got me to kind of bury the hatchet with, with Jack Warner and come back out for, for my national 
NFL team when he was appointed as, as, as head coach. A man I describe as my footballing father. Um, he's played an outsized role in, in, my footballing, in my footballing career. I want to hear more about burying the hatchet with uh, Jack Warner, but I guess we'll, uh, we'll leave that aside no, for you now. Don't. Oh. Nobody, oh, nobody uh, wants to hear any more about that. Well, I'm not going there. Um, Ian, what about you? Uh, who, who kind of influenced your development as a broadcaster? Uh, well, we don't, we don't get coaches when we're young teenagers, so maybe we'd all be better broadcasters if we did. But yeah, I think um, probably if I picked up one guy who I worked with and he became really a, almost like a pin-up and the number one broadcaster in the UK, that was Desmond Lynham, um, who I worked with and was privileged to work alongside at, at BBC Radio uh, when I was just emerging, <laughs> if I ever did emerge. But uh, he was brilliant, really, and, and just listening to him and being around him and the things he would, would pass on, uh, it was all pretty good advice. But don't you, you know, for example, you talk about coaches, but don't like a lot of parents, you know, for me, uh, you know, my, my dad and my uh, grandfather, who was my Uncle George's dad, who, as I said, played, it was just football, football, football. And from a little, you know, so they're coaching you, they're telling you. They were your coaches. They were yeah, your they are your coaches. coaches. They're your big, biggest critics. Are your coaches? Are your driver? They you know take you to all the games, travel the country, all that sort of stuff. Parents do it all over the world, and they effectively are your coaches, and 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 at times are your harshest critics as well. So I think that's where you learn the most, and then you go in and you play, and you know you meet a lot of different coaches along the way, all excellent, most of them. But no, I would say that just going in the back garden with with the. Uh, my uh, family when I was a youngster was the biggest memories. Last question from Frank's Restaurant Shorts. If Real Madrid were to go on. Shorts. You know how he hates shorts in a restaurant. If Real Madrid were to go on to win the Champions League this year, would it be one of the best ones because of the difficulty of opponents from the start? Um, Ian, you've got the historical perspective. What do you think it would be? PSG, Chelsea, City, Liverpool? That's a, that's a pretty good run would be an amazing run and, and let's face it at the beginning of the season we perceived Real Madrid to be a team with quite a few problems maybe not as many as Barcelona but how many people would have fancied them to win the Champions League this season not that many I would say so if they do it yeah they can say that was a, that was a heck of a run one of the best hmm. I think so but and I tell you why it's not just the run I don't think there was any expectation at the start of the season uh, probably even in terms of La Liga. They lost Varane, who's not had a good season, and Ramos, who not had a good season. But they were two key players, you know, for uh, for Real Madrid. Bale still been on the missing list. Hazard's never turned up. Vinicius Jr. wasn't playing well. So, you know, you had Casemiro, Modric, and Cruz. Cruz, and, and uh, two of them at least in their 30s. Luka Modric, 36. And so when Ancelotti comes in, wins the league by a country mile and if he does go all the way in the Champions League with what is not the greatest Real Madrid side which is a side that had problems at the start of the season has not played well in a lot of games in the league of this season but has found a way to win it would, I think it would be an, a heck of an achievement bearing in mind the other teams left in it particularly the English clubs are coming from a position of strength and we're in the summer I assumed that they would be playing Liverpool in the final. I should note that Villarreal is still very much alive. So, but you just don't like Spanish teams. That's it. You that's want to it. see an all English final? <laughs> yes, that's that's talk about it on Football Americas tonight. <laughs> Thank you for that. We will be talking about it on Football Americas tonight. You will be. Listen, talking... by the way, if you on that, if you want to clip my Pulisic segment up and stick it on that. Show, I'm sorry. You think I want to deal with you more? You can after do the it, show. But yes. You must phone me first for copyright. <laughs> There it is. Otherwise, uh, it's ESPN FC, only part of the fun here on ESPN Plus. Football America is available for you twice a week. Don't miss a single episode. And of course, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Don't miss a single episode. We are back tomorrow. Full reaction to Liverpool via Real. Welcome. 
Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.